Okay, I think uh, most people are here, so I'm just going to start. So welcome to this webinar of Ensemble Highlights. I'm Julieta Spudic, um, and I'm project leader of Ensemble Outreach. So we go around the world, and sometimes on the internet, we give these um, presentations. So um, just some practicalities for the webinar today. I actually muted everyone's microphone, but I will take questions at the end. I'm going to go through just a very brief introduction to Ensemble and Ensemble Genes, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about advanced features, um, including ENCODE, uh, attaching your own data, looking at the VEP, some of you may have heard about this, and then different ways of retrieving data um, programmatically and also non-programmatically, and finally, some pointers about how to get help. I am going to launch a little poll just to get an idea um, but it looks like 100% of the people have used the website, 75 have used Biomart. Okay, so that's great. I'm going to be able to let you know about some of our other features. We've got large amounts of raw DNA sequence data. So how can we make this sequence interesting or meaningful? This is what genome browsers are trying to do, like Ensemble. Also, both our competitor and our collaborator, UCSC a Genome Browser. Um, a lot of people use kind of both of these or one or the other to look at multi-sequence browsing across different species, across many species of vertebrates, uh, mainly in Ensemble. And there's also NCBI Map Viewer. Um, so we're kind of focused on this aim. So what exactly do we have in Ensemble? How do we make the genome interesting? Well, if you go to a location on the genome, you can find a lot of different types of data like splice variants, proteins, non-coding RNA, small and large scale sequence variation, phenotypes uh, associated with those variations and also associated with genes. We can see whole genome alignments. So we do all these analyses in the Ensemble Compara team, protein trees to detect homologs, potential promoters and enhancers, and DNA methylation. A lot of the potential promoters and enhancers for human and mouse are from the ENCODE project. So we do an analysis on top of the ENCODE data there. And then we allow user uploads. So you, can, you may have used this feature already of um, attaching your own data or uploading your own data to compare with what we have, the Ensemble annotation. So getting a little more specific, we have gene builds or gene sets, or about 70 species, including the gen code set for human. And we have uh, the gene trees there, which I mentioned, variation display, and the VEP. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit more what the VEP does. Uh, Biomart, which I saw um, one or two of you have used, but not everyone. And then programmatic access. I'm just going to run through that very quickly. And uh, one feature is that we're completely open source. So all our data is freely available and also our pipelines. So the gen code set, which I mentioned, the ensemble gene set, and it's actually made up of ensemble automatically annotated genes that come through an automatic pipeline and Havana manually annotated genes. So those are combined together into a merged gene set. Our merged genes are actually identical from the two different processes, so from the automatic pipeline and from the manual annotation. Um, but we include things that are not identical between the two projects in the gen code set. And this is a default gene set being used by ENCODE, Thousand Genomes, uh, and other major sequencing projects. And I've given you some URLs there, which you can have a look at. You've got the um, the URLs there at the bottom, and you can look at those uh, in your own time. So even though I like to clarify one point, because even though we have an automatically annotated gene set, everything, all the genes that we have and all the transcripts do come from biological evidence. So this is from the original uh, sequence databases, ENA, GenBank, and DDBJ, where people submit their sequences. Also protein sequence databases, Uniprot, SwissProt, and Tremble and the manually annotated set from NCBI RefSeq. So we're, we're not doing ab initio prediction. We're always going back to some evidence that was found in a lab or found uh, experimentally. And uh, you can see these transcripts. So all of you have used the website, so you'll be used to seeing these gene views. And you can see the color coding lets you know. Gold is kind of our highest standard or high confidence transcript. 
or you can think of it as golden standard. So this is merged between Havana manual annotation and the ensemble automatic pipeline. It means that both projects came up with exactly the same transcript. And it just means really that the underlying evidence is very good. So you can see it's broken down into coding exons, which are filled boxes, introns, which are the lines connecting the boxes, non-coding exons, like the UTRs at the ends. Then we have red transcripts, and these are either from the Ensemble project or from the Havana project, but we include those uh, into the gene set. Um, and then we have blue ones, which are non-coding transcripts. Most of those are actually from manual annotation. Okay, so that's a little bit about the genes. Now I just like to go through what we have quickly about ENCODE and then data upload, um, so user data. So ENCODE, we do have access to all the ENCODE data in a track hub. Not everyone realizes that. There are instructions if you do want to add all the data here at the bottom, you can look at that URL. That will let you, it actually just gives you a link that you can click on to include the track hub. But if you don't want to see all the ENCODE information, because it is an enormous amount of information, we do have a selected set as well, uh, just uh, by default in the region and detail page or the location tab. And what you can do, we have a matrix. Um, and in this case, the histone modifications are at the top and the cell types are down here. And you can just choose what you want turned on. And this will turn on different tracks, in this case, different histone modifications for, in this case, CD4 cells. And then you can have a look at where those signatures are from, where are those uh, modifications. We also have transcription factor binding sites in the same way. And you may want to turn those on and compare with where they fall in terms of the gene. So that's a little bit about ENCODE. Feel free to ask me more at the end. Visualizing your own data. So maybe you want to upload, for example, a motif that you found and see if we have any uh, regulatory data compared with it, for example, ENCODE data. So you can do this by uploading the data. In this case, it's saved by Ensemble. And we do have a limit. So it's, it's not possible for large file formats. Or for really big files, you can attach it remotely, URL-based with HTTP or FTP. There are more instructions and there's a URL there at the bottom. And this is just an example. So I've attached a BAM file of Illumina reads. So you can see that here, my Illumina, and you can zoom in to see the actual sequence there. And in this case, I've compared it against a specific gene. There's a tutorial, a video tutorial that we made on YouTube that shows you how to add your own data. And you can have a look at the supported file formats. Uh, on the bottom right there. Uh, so we support a variety of formats. If you do have your own data, you may not just want to display it, you may actually want to do some analysis on it. And this is what we try to do with the tools. Our most popular tool is the Variant Effect Predictor or the VEP. And what it does is you can input alleles or mutations, so different nucleotides at a genomic position or on a transcript position. And basically you get the consequences on the ensemble genes and transcripts. So is there going to be a protein coding change, for example, uh, based on the sequence? Uh, the input files that are taken are RSIDs. Those are from dbSNP. Or if you have genomic coordinates, you can put that in. VCF files, PILAP, and HGVS notation. You can use this as a web interface or the Perl script that's standalone or using the Perl API. And if you want to have a closer look, you can go to tools. The output is um, at the moment is a table, although there's going to be some exciting changes um, and additions in the near future. And basically it shows you what I uploaded in this case. In that first column is just chromosome one, a coordinate, a genomic coordinate, and then either a, a deletion or a C at that position. So it will let me know again the location. So it read the location and properly the allele, the gene and transcript. And then you can have a look for some transcripts. It's going to be downstream. But in this third row here, I see it's a, a frame shift variant. So then if, there, if it is in the coding sequence, it will let you know exactly where in the cDNA in the coding sequence. And then if I scrolled to the right, it would show me the amino acid change as well. And you can export this table. Okay, these are the consequences we're using. For example, in the coding sequence, we have missense or synonymous. 
We have uh, regulatory SNPs if they fall in a region determined by our regulatory build, again, based on ENCODE for human and mouse, and also Blueprint for human, Lysite, Intronic. And these are actually from sequence ontology terms. So really the idea is trying to be consistent across bioinformatic projects to make it easier um, for our users to compare things and also easier for us in the end to compare data with projects. So those are the sequence ontology terms. So if you want to see the effects and the consequences, there is a URL for that. Um, I'm just going to conclude with data retrieval, other ways of retrieving data. Uh, quite a few of you have used Biomart, I saw. So this is a data export tool. You don't need to know any programming, although you can access it programmatically, for example, with R and it, it, you can use it with Bioconductor, things like that. But if you don't know programming, it's fine. Uh, it's a quick table generator in a way, talking about Excel tables there, and it allows you to mine the ensemble data with a web interface. And these are just some examples of what you can do. Export a list of genes in a region, convert IDs, gene list from one ID to another, uh, extract sequences, of genes or variants, for example, and the flanking sequence to the variants, and get homo homologs, so orthologs and paralogs. It is limited, though, and this is this is a problem. You're you're stuck with very specific queries, and if you want more flexibility about Biomart, that's when you have to use the APIs. So the Perl API, our wet lab community really likes Biomart, but our programmatic community also uses Biomart, and what they tend to do is. If they can answer the question with Biomart, they do so. If they can't, a lot of them then turn to the Perl API. So this is much more flexible and you can really query a lot of data from the ensemble databases. They're kept current with every release. So that's our update every two months, um, our, our releases. And really you don't have to know a lot of Perl, very basic Perl, the scripts are already written. Um, and then you can go ahead and extract information that way. And again, if you want to know more about installation and tutorials, there's a link at the bottom. And what is a quite a new thing that we have is a REST API. So this is even easier than the Perl API because you, you actually don't have to know a programming language to use REST. You can use it off the command line. Um, it's still in beta form, so we do invite you to give it a try and give us feedback. We have kind of a limited number of endpoints, but these are uh, increasing. So you can get, for example, the alignments out of the comparative genomics, you can get sequences, and you can use a variety of different languages. So it's very flexible, Manline or Perl or Python or Ruby. So do have a look at that. Um, it's it's quite, a, quite an exciting new tool of ours. So help and documentation after this webinar, if you have Questions that I didn't answer, for example, in the in the or Denise didn't answer uh, after this talk, you can email us at helpdesk any question or even if you want something in Ensemble that's not there. We like to hear from our users. We do have some training courses online and tutorials, so you can have a look there. We have a YouTube channel and we have a couple uh, mailing lists as well. You can host an Ensemble course, so either a browser course or an API course. You can. Uh, email me for the details. And we do have Facebook, Twitter, and a blog. This is the team. So we're around 50 people now. We're split between the EBI and the Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute. And we have two heads, so Paul Fleecek and Steve Searle. And I'm here on the outreach team. And Denise is with me as well. OK, so we always uh, like to thank our funders. And then now, if you do have questions, what I'm going to do is um, I'll keep an eye on who wants to ask a question. Just click on the little hands if you would like to ask it verbally, and I will unmute you. And if you would rather just type in a question, that's also fine. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I'll take any questions now.